Hello everyone. The council meeting of the... Oh, I haven't got my run sheet. Whatever it is. No, we're still on the Thursday the 20th. We're still on... We're Friday the 24th. <laughs> uh, 2021. Welcome everybody. And um, just a reminder about emergency procedures. Use the stairs, not the lift. Um, and uh, also a reminder that we're live on video and to any public that's available on YouTube and uh, also just check your mobile phones are either off or on silent. So when we left last night we had done a couple of tidy ups that we left to, um, oh so the, the first thing we need to do, sorry, is to um, have a motion to accept a late paper on um, the Remaker space. So would someone like to move that bill? Seconded by Shared, thank you. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, carried, thank you. So we've accepted that. Um, I just wanted to go back to the decision that we made on Tariko Play Centre. Uh, where, it is, where is it? Tariko Play Centre, <clears throat> which is Blue Book, page 84-83. Public Agenda 174, we, we had a new uh, set of recommendations, Raj has put them up there on the screen. Um, I just wanted to add into that if I could, it's not urgent but put it on the work program to come, if we could review the reserve management plan requirements. Is that possible? And then Gareth might want to add. So you can. It's actually a really link, quite a complex and lengthy process. And I'm just thinking, given the other things that you want to focus on and get done, um, including many of the resolutions that were passed yesterday in terms of the community immunity. Okay. So yes, you can put it on the work program. Um, we can add it into the list that is going to the strategy and risk and finance. So that agenda's already gone, but you could have it there. Um, and in the meantime, if any other situations come up, you can deal with them by resolution. Yeah. So. Do, you want a, do you want a motion? Oh, I think you might be better even just to pick it up on Monday. Um, oh, okay. When you've got the work program for the strategy committee okay. in front of you. All right. Might yep. be a better happy, place. Happy yep. to do that. Yep. yep. Everyone happy with that? When we finished last night, is there anything... Do you, do you want to pick up on anything before we go forward? We've still got one outstanding, haven't we? Yeah, uh, Blake, Blake Park, we Blake need to Park. come back to our recommendations for that, so staff are still working on it at the moment. Yeah, if we can give us a little bit more time on that okay. one. Um, okay. And then uh, just adding in the remaker one somewhere along the way and um, just need to, when we get to a, an appropriate place, we've got uh, some comment about the Rovers Football Club we'll just add into the mix. Do you want to do those now? Before we get into the agenda? Yep, may as well. Gives me time to find my places. Thank you. So um, we received a, um, well, no, not received, we found a late um, uh, submission from uh, Remaker. They weren't late, uh, just got fell in the cracks. Uh, so we managed to track that down last night and have... Um, uh, tabled an issues and options paper this morning. They are seeking three years of operational funding to continue their operation. Uh, TCC funded them last year, or this current year, 160k, and have already committed to fund them 80k from July through to October at their current location at our place. Um, our place winds up at the end of October to allow for the site to be developed, so um, everyone's aware of the fact that they need to move. Um, Remaker want to move to another location, undefined at this point in time, and are seeking um, operational funding for us f from us for three years uh, at the rate of 200k, uh, 190 and 180. Um, so, you know, great initiative, but um, a, a prime candidate for referring to the community grant fund for a partnership agreement or a one, you know, one-off grant, which is our recommendation. Any questions? I think um, someone prepared to move then. 
option one. Option one. Bill moved. Shared seconded. Um, it would be fair to say that we've been encouraging of Remaker. They um, are doing a great job. I'd love to see them involved in the CBD cultural discussions. A lot of young people um, are, are, are taking advantage of that. I mean, apart from the educational uh, aspect that they're starting to get into, but you know, if we're serious about having students in town and, and providing activities for them, this is, this is one of those that could be considered. All right, I'll put that all those in favour say aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Just the other one. Um, during the process of um, since checking all of the responses to the uh, LTP tickets and issues and options reports, we discovered another one from the Blue Rovers Football Club um, that did have a request in for funding for fifty thousand dollars for a, stud a feasibility study and business case into an artificial turf, um, specifically in Gretton. But they also noted that through the course of the study, if there was a better location, well then so be it. Um, this was missed, it probably should have come as an issues and options report, and the reason we didn't knock out another one quickly was that we feel like it's, it's been covered as part of the other papers. Obviously their needs will be included as part of the broader pieces of work we've got doing, and then yesterday we approved bringing forward 45k to specifically investigate artificial turf. So we'll make sure our ticket response to the, the uh, Blue Rovers Football Club reflects the decisions that we've made in the last day, but I just wanted to table the fact that they did make a submission that probably should have had an issues and options paper, um, and we'll make sure that's reflected in our ticket response to them. Happy with that? Yeah, I think. Right, so that brings us to the incubator, and that is Green Book, one, page 172, and for the public... Um, agenda that's page 323. Thank you. Um, so you will um, have no doubt recall someone on the team's uh, submission and then uh, there was a very strong theme of support for arts and culture during the long-term plan submissions. I think over 250 written submissions and um, a relatively large number of verbal submissions, so strong support for A, arts and culture, and B, the work the incubator are doing. Um, councils, too, very supportive of the incubator and the work they're doing, and arts and culture, to the point where, as was pointed out a couple of times, uh, council in the last six months have created our first ever manager arts and culture position, because we genuinely believe we need to um, elevate the importance of arts and culture to council. So uh, we've already done that. Um, we're really supportive of their submission. Uh, staff have landed on a recommendation of um, confirming uh, a $250,000 contribution, which was $100,000 more than they currently get, and confirming that for the next three years, but also as re recognition for kind of the progress they're making and wanting to cement that partnership, um, put a set of KPIs in place so that if things continue to go well, we increase that funding over the next couple of years at a rate that allows them to um, do other significant projects and keep growing their operations. So uh, that, that's where the staff recommendation, recommendation landed. Um, Gareth, I, I, look, I, I should have tried to find it last night and um, didn't, it was a long day. But there is also in the capital budget, uh, there's quite a, uh, an ongoing program of upgrades in the of, of capital contribution as well, isn't it? Yeah, c correct. I, I, I apologise, I don't have the finger, figures off the top of my head, but um, th there is a, a large programme of capital works planned for the historic village off the back of the new um, strategy that we developed for the village at the end of last year because we wanted to empower the strategy to achieve things quickly rather than it to drag on. Um, so we actually, in the draft annual plan, bought a lot of the capital program for the historic village forward into years one and two, when it used to sit kind of linger in years five, six, and seven if we ever got around to it. So I feel like we've prioritised our support for arts and culture in the incubator in that way as well by bringing that significant capital expenditure forward, and it, it, it's in excess of a couple of million dollars in the next year at least. It is, that's why I raise it, because it is quite considerable. So between the two, there's actually 
quite a lot of investment going into that historic village, and I assume that the um, capital works will be done in consultation with the incubator. Yeah, absolutely, and done in consultation with all of the tenants of the village to reflect the strategy work that we've done. Yeah. Well, any, any other questions? Stephen. So just to be clear, the 110 is not currently provided for in the LTP, the incremental steps? Uh, no, that would, be, that would be added in. But the additional one, so they currently get funding of $150,000. We're proposing 250 in the first year of the LTP, which we've already put in the draft LTP, yep. and then there's an additional 110 per annum from uh, financial year 23 onwards. So, but that is not currently in there. That would be added in. Okay, so that has a rate implication. Yep. From year two, correct. Sorry, just to follow on from that, in the addition, the 110 in year two and three, is that subject to um, meeting certain? Um, Outcomes. Yeah, correct. Uh, yet to be find, defined, but we'll absolutely sit down and uh, have a conversation with someone on the team in terms of what what we're expecting from them to um, give us confidence that that extra investment is going to you know deliver great outcomes and results. Who's moving? Shared seconding. All those in favour, say aye. Against? Carried. Can't put those on top of that. Sit. Okay. That brings us to activate vacant spaces from Main Street Tauranga, Blue Book 172. Uh, public. Oh, that's Green Book. Public agenda is 328. Thank you. Um, so this is a uh, submission from uh, downtown Tauranga for um, financial support for the continuation of the va Activate Vacant Spaces uh, program that they trialled uh, recently. Uh, so that's basically taking vacant shop spaces in the CBD and activating them uh, with you know whatever comes our way, largely arts and culture related activities, but also um, there was, a, there was a great STEM activation in the old Helenstein's shop for a while, which was which was really good. Um, they're after a significant amount of money to, to roll that project out, and um, the staff recommendation at this point in time was to decline that that, that request for funding. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it's a tricky one. It, 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 reading their submission, it was um, a little bit difficult to clearly uh, define the results that they had achieved. Um, it, a lot of it is anecdotal, um, and you hear some great anecdotes, and then you hear some not so great anecdotes. So, it, it, for, from a staff point of view, it felt hard to find facts uh, to, to substantiate that kind of level of investment. Um, but I think, on the other hand, we would say that it, it's hard to deny that having stuff happening in our vacant shops is not a good thing. So, from that point of view, you know, we're, we're, we're supportive of the concept. So, I guess over to you guys to ask any questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah, so um, I think we've got to take it in a bit of context too, in that we are going to be um, uh, developing some of the spaces ourselves while, while if we, this building's coming down and we're relocating the library. So, there's that for a start. <clears throat> we've already put 100,000 in. Um, to support exhibition of uh, Tauranga's Tonga, um, and the logical place for that would be in some of the empty spaces in, in town. Um, plus the fact we've extended the free parking trial, so that's 150k uh, per month that um, in parking charges that we're supporting downtown Tauranga, and we've put 500,000 into the budget to support redevelopment of downtown. So. Um, there is quite a considerable investment apart from even our, um, moving the council into Devonport Road uh, and the construction there. Um, I have to say, I agree with you, I, I, I found it hard to get the actual 
I, I expected a trial to come with some facts and figures, the end of a trial, to do a good analysis of that trial, and I didn't see that. Um, and, I, and I was disappointed, I guess, when I asked if they'd considered even going 50-50 with council to continue that um, out of the targeted rate that they get about 700,000, I think they collect in the targeted rate. Did I read that somewhere? I, I want to say it's less than that. I want to say 400, something like that. Is it 400? Whatever it is, they, they do actually get a targeted rate. Three? 350. Oh, right. Well, double, yeah. Um, anyway, there, there was no um, even consideration of paying for some of that out of their, out of their targeted rate. So um, I, I, th I think probably we've made the right decision. Uh, and there's, there's nothing stopping them continuing it and picking it up out of that targeted rate if they want to continue. Thanks, Chair. I um, agree with those comments you've um, outlined. And at the end of the day, it's still supporting activation, but the investment um, and what, where that support is is just taking a, a different form um, as opposed to the current trial. So I support. Questions? All right. Well, I'm happy to move that we decline that request. Bill, you second that? Any further discussion? So that's option one. Um, but we continue to work alongside Main Street, Tauranga. Yep. Is it option four? Option four, sorry. Right, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> you're looking at me blankly. Option four, that we don't provide any funding to activate vacant spaces, but I think when we notify them of that, we point out the other investments that we are making in downtown Toron. Okay, I'll put that. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against? Carried, thank you. Mount Monganui Business Association. They didn't actually ask for anything except an ongoing um, consultation process about further development. Is that? I, no, that they asked for twenty million dollars to be added into the later years of the LTP for development of the mount, um, uh, the mount area, and, and an ongoing working relationship with council. Um. Conveniently overlooked the twenty million. <laughs> it was too far out. <laughs> Look, I, and, and I mean that's that's the. That's the staff response to the report, really. I mean, I think you'll find that Council's investment in the Mount will be well north of 20 million at some point in the future. But we've got some uh, spatial planning work we're doing at the moment, which will lead to neighbourhood planning, which will then lead to how we you know, make that investment in coming annual plans and long-term plans. So um, I wouldn't see this as saying no to $20 million of investment in the Mount. It, it will come, it will happen. But I, I, the staff recommendation is that it wouldn't be appropriate to um, single that out at this point in time and include it as they've requested it in their submission. Just following on from that, Gareth, uh, presumably once the um, the spatial planning work is completed at the Mount, that could then give rise to a focus on particular actions or investment that may be required, the same as the department. Uh, yes, absolutely, and the spatial planning work is linked to the conversations that are underway through Smart Growth at the moment around the regional policy statement and the impact of natural hazards on the ability to densify. So um, it's been agreed at the chief executive level that there'll be some further work done, so that's now been activated within the senior managers group. Uh, and once, So our thinking is that we would proceed with the spatial planning in the Otomotai area uh, first, resolve uh, or come to a conclusion in terms of the RPS, that would then give us clarity on the nature and scope of development that can, can occur in that Mount Maunganui area, and then we can then proceed with the spatial planning. Um, but just checking that that doesn't preclude um, in this ongoing relationship with the um, association that we might um, be doing, I mean, I, I, they're, they're talking about the um, improvements to the park there, um, that, you know, so it doesn't preclude any of, of those, some signage and, you know, th those things may come as part of your general budget and, yeah. Absolutely, and as part of our ongoing 
business as usual relationship working yep. with Mount Main Street. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Everyone happy with that? Someone prepared to move. We don't provide that twenty million in the capital budget, especially for Mount Monganui. Stephen, Bill seconding. All in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Hapamoa Residents and Ratepayers Association. That is the Blue Book 178. And the Public Agenda 334. And this is their request for $150,000 to fight the council, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> to fight with the council. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, the Papamoa Residents and Ratepayers Association have requested uh, $150,000 per annum, and they intend to use these funds to hire consultants to, I guess, to en engage in our processes, audit them. Um, and whilst our recommendation is to decline the request, we do recognise that the underlying theme of trust and confidence is what this submission is about and that we have a part to play in this. So our recommendation is around working more closely with them, um, helping them understand uh, our projects um, from beginning to end, and helping understand how we can put their community at the heart of what we do. So open to questions. No, I think that's very sensible. And of course, um, I think we've been at, since we've been appointed commissioners, I think we've been there every month in some shape and form talking through some of the issues with them and um, and we've got the Palm Beach issue coming back to us in August so I think um, I think I think it's right that we form a better relationship and get talk with them earlier and uh, there's no need then for them to have that uh, fund all right so I'm happy to move the recommendation is someone prepared to second it thank you Stephen so we're going to decline the funding request but seek to establish a more robust structure for greater communication and engagement with the submitter and other community groups. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Wednesday challenge. Nick. What the, oh, it's the Green Book, page 177, and the Public Agenda, page 337. Thank you. So this is a request that has come from a group uh, that is developing a transport initiative to incentivise uh, people towards mode shift. And they want to do this by highlighting options to individual car travel and incentivise people to do something different one day a week. Um, I have, hence the name. Um, it is app driven, so it's incentivised um, to create, I guess, we, we, we're not sure about the detail around this, but in to incentivize people to do something different by com uh, through competitions and challenges and prize givings, etc., and connect people through this app to, uh, to put them together for the, for the rideshare component, um, or incentivize people to uh, get on public transport or use other active modes. Uh, the point of the app, uh, as I said, is to put people together, but it also will gather a lot of data, uh, we think, around behavioural change, uh, which could be useful to us. And the thinking is, by challenging people to do something different once a day, uh, it might whet the appetite uh, to do something different for a, a bigger portion of the travel demand. Um, and we, like I said, we see benefits in the data and the behavioural change and um, to see, A, the, the uptake that it will create and get the numbers out of that, but also then to correlate that to the impact it will have on the network. So um, personally, I'm quite curious about that. Uh, it, is, it is a co-funded initiative, so the Regional Council have committed to fund it if we do, <laughs> um, and NCTA have committed to fund it as well, as I understand, that, and they have they have already put thirty thousand dollars towards it as a bridging funding to get, as I understand, the app development underway. Um, and it is a it is a one-off request. Uh, we understand that f uh, subsequent years will will be 
it, it will be self self funded. Anyway, so the, the staff recommendation is to um, approve it, and it's the the value of it is 150. Sorry, I've got it now. I'm looking at your submission now. 146,250 dollars. Any questions? Yes, um, I'm sure there will be. Um, I, I think that uh, a, a lot of the work that we're doing, certainly when we talk to people about um, Cameron Road and the uh, transport, you know, the changes that we're trying to make there, uh, and you talk to people who don't understand why you know, there's the need for dedicated bus lanes and cycling and walking provision, um, and you talk to them about the future and you know how the next 20 years um, we're going to have to think about how we how we travel round, uh, and electric cars are, are still expensive that the average family can't afford, but but um, you know bikes and and walking is is an option for many, and and a good public transport system helps you get from A to B. And so um, what we know is that that is a generational change. That's it, 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 if, and if we don't do anything to push people along that uh, track, everyone talks about the, climate, the, the, the changes that are happening to our climate, the need to reduce carbon and for New Zealand to do its bit, but they're not quite sure about what they can do individually or they're reluctant to do something individually. It's the, typical way that everyone else has to do something, but I don't want to change my way of living. So it's very clear that we're going to need some um, interventions, if you like, to make people start thinking differently. And I include myself in that, because I just said, they're going to make me catch the bus from Papamoa, which means I'm going to have to get off in Bayfair and hang around and hope that it's not raining on a Wednesday. Um, and then catch another bus in town until the regional council put back the express bus from Papamoa. But, but that's what that challenge will make people do, is stop and think. Now, not everyone, um, but um, it, will, it will make a lot of people stop and think about um, how we do it. Now, I'm old enough to remember Carla's days um, and how we all thought that was the end of the world. And actually, in the end, we managed quite well. We, we made arrangements and we got on with it. So um, I, I'm, I'm quite supportive of it, but I do think that we should be, uh, I just wonder whether we shouldn't be tagging it because it is, it is a three-way split and Waka Kotahi have a big role to play in this. They're the ones that are really pushing that multimodal change and I think they need to put their money where their mouth is. Um, and, and they need to be a part of it too. So um, I, I just wonder whether it shouldn't, sh as the regional council have made it conditional, I think, f on the other parties. So should we? That's not reflected in your in your recommendation. Uh, that, that's right. So um, I, I would have to get confirmation from Waka Kotahi on that. We understand that that is the case from the regional council. Um, Yeah, I, <clears throat> I echo your thoughts. Um, we had a, and, and I do like the, the sort of the conditionality about this is a combined effort by the, the key agencies. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of submissions um, and around the need for the council to take a leadership role in carbon emissions and more sustainable living. Um, and I think this is a, a pilot kind of program that the the leaders of it intend to roll it out if it's successful, effectively nationwide. But what I like about it is it's an opportunity to not only <coughs> incentivise people to, and educate people, because there was quite a significant component of the initiative around, actually there are alternatives for people, but often they don't know about them. Um, so it's both an incentive and a, an educational kind of a, a initiative. And from a technical point of view, and you rightly say that the data will be useful, um, but also uh, in addition to that, actually the effectiveness or not of the educational uh, marketing initiative in itself 
to enable behaviour change, I think will be quite insightful and it will enable us to test um, you know, whether or not this kind of approach actually makes a difference. I think that's really important um, because many of us we know could make a decision to travel differently than we do, but convenience and habit, uh, you know, we just keep on doing the same thing. Um, so I think this is a really good opportunity to test the potential for change in Tauranga. Um, it's a relatively small amount of money when you consider our total transport budget, it's, it's tiny. Um, but nevertheless, in partnering with the other agencies, uh, we can leverage off that uh, and hopefully um, prove that there is an opportunity there and we can make a difference. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I just want to support, I suppose, what, what Anne and what Stephen have kind of um, indicated. I support the initiative as well. I mean, I, I walk, actually, I walked here this morning. Um, so I did my Carlos Wednesday today, essentially. Um, but I use public transport a lot, and, um, and it's a conscious decision I've made, um, and, and just using one vehicle. I mean, we live quite handy to the supermarket. I live handy to the city, and so everything's accessible, amenity and all of those things. So um, for a lot of people, they don't have that luxury. Um, so we need to bear that in mind. But I'm, I'm supportive of this initiative. And picking up the point that Stephen made about leadership, um, yes, we can make these decisions here, but I'd, I'd strongly encourage the organisation as well. So if we do pick this up, well, we are suggesting to pick it up. Um, and actually, as an organisation, I think as an organisation, show some leadership. Um, you know, for its, its employees that actually they can also make a difference. They can also commit to um, doing things differently, whether that's carpooling, walking, biking, cycling, um, bus, public transport, carpooling, all working from home. Um, and I think if, the, if this council can do that, show some leadership in that space, um, promoting that with our partners. Um, with the regional council, so if we pick up a Carlos Wednesday, um, then strongly encourage our partners to do the same, um, and also Waka Kotahi. So that's my challenge, is um, support uh, the initiative, and if we support the initiative, then we need to show leadership um, as governors, but also as, um, as an organisation. Thank you. Picking so up a very clear message on that. Thank you, um, <laughs> Commissioner. Shadrick, um, it, it might actually be worth, worth talking about uh, an initiative and leadership that the organisation did display. Uh, a, this was a, a couple of years ago, but it was an initiative that saw the purchase of um, dozens and dozens of electric bikes by staff that was supported by the organisation. Is that something, Paul, that you could talk to? Yeah, it was. It, it, it started with um, it started with actually a finance team building lunch that we actually worked with. Um, one of the providers just to have some demonstrations of, of e-bikes. Um, we went back to them after that and said, well, this actually seems a really good opportunity for um, to, to come on board. So we, we looked at um, purchasing some for our fleet and also looking at allowing um, a, a disc, a, basically a bulk by discount to actually get staff on. And um, it's fair to say that we thought we'd get about 30 which is what we sort of priced it on. We got over 50 in the first round and, and requests for more after that. So it was it was a pretty simple th thing to do, um, but it, it, it worked well. Um, and if you at any time have a look in the Cameron Road bike compound at the moment, there is an enormous amount of e-bikes in there now. Um, so yeah, it was very successful. It also got taken up by a number of councils uh, around the country and... And, and, and into TA, yes. So, um, we already had uh, two conditions um, in the approval and one was that, that they made the uh, data from the app available to us um, and the second one is that it, it, that it complements rather than overlaps the work, the excellent work I should say that our Travel Safe team does in this space and working with schools and they've over, over a number of years built up really good relationships uh, and there were aspects of, of this Wednesday challenge that got close to that, so we just want to work with them and make sure that there are no overlaps. And then, um, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll add your third condition around the Waka Kotahi approval of the funding as well. 
and, and there's no two ways about it that, uh, that we need to do something different. We have a formidable program in the TSP for the billion dollars worth of investment over the, over the next 10 years in transport, but we also know that the effect of that is in actually taking away the congestion everywhere. So, uh, or, or solving all our problems for that matter. It, it will solve many of them, and it is a necessity to drive that program through, but it is also reliant on, on behavioral change and us doing something different, and, and, and this, is, uh, this could uh, be a bit of a starting gun for that. Thank you. So I'm suggesting uh, we have an H2, and funding is contingent on partnership contributions from Waka Kotahi and the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. Happy to move that bill. So that's H and H2. Stephen seconding. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against? Carried. We've done road reseals, so that brings us to tsunami sirens. Um, and the recommendation is to defer the project for one year, and this is part of that ongoing relationship with the Papamoa Residents Association. I went out there um, with, um, with Barbara and also Clinton from the um, National Emergency Organisation. Emergency Management Bay of Plenty. Emergency Management Bay of Plenty. Bay of Plenty. Um, and talked to the residents um, because it's not just about alerts, it, we've got to move on in light of the March uh, um, um, incident, well, incident, event, um, evacuation was a big problem. So the streets uh, heading from Papamoa to the Mount were clogged um, and this is an opportunity for us to talk through whether we spend the money on sirens or in fact we get more into um, looking at the evacuation process and helping people put together a plan uh, and um, I'm, 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 I'm explaining the recommendation but, but <laughs> I went out there and talked about it. <laughs> so we're looking to set up a committee that involves the community, not just the Ratepayers Association but um, this, there's um, uh, someone involving the schools, the retirement villages uh, and probably um, Either, either, some, some, an organisation like the Surf Club that has quite a broad uh, group of people who, who it could be another sports club. But so we get try and get a representative committee together to work through both the alert system and an evacuation um, process and identification of, of um, routes and places for people to go. So, um, and I've explained the I've explained the recommendation. I'm happy to move it. <laughs> Do I have to declare a conflict of interest because I live there? Um, <coughs> I'm happy to second the recommendation and I, I actually think this is a situation where the technology has, has replaced uh, the need for sirens and I do recognise and, and the Papamoa Rate Post Association did uh, make the point that not everyone has one of these or is confident in their, loot, in their use but part of the, the programme we're talking about is to ensure that there is a, someone can help in that situation or perhaps um, those who need uh, support in how to use them or even providing them um, are better options than a siren that may well be too late, actually. Um, so, and I think the emphasis does need to go on to the evacuation, as you rightly said, and so happy to support it. I think this is the right decision. Discussion? I'll put that. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. I have assured them that the money's still there. Uh, EnviroHub funding. Blue Book 184. Uh, public Agenda 354. Thank you. Um, a request from EnviroHub. They have plenty for some ongoing annual operation and operational funding to deliver a suite of programs and initiatives that raise awareness and promote action around climate change, biodiversity, pollution and resistance. Um, staff recommendation is to refer to the um, uh, Community Grant Fund 
for either a grant or a potential partnership agreement. Mm. A worthy organisation, worthy work, um, but that feels like the right platform for it. I think I sense that we would like a partnership agreement. So can we reshape that recommendation so that we, uh, I just can't remember, we supported it to the community um, fund for partnership funding. Yes, we've got that wording. You've got that wording? Yes. <laughs> well, that's the same as the other wording. Yeah, same we'll just the reflect other. the wording from yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yep. So we've got supports and adding in partnership agreement. Yeah. Someone want to move that? Yeah, you want to ask a question? Sorry, I just want to make a comment. Um, just in terms of the Enviro Hub, I mean, I've been around probably 10, 15 years now, and I've del delivered a lot of good things into the community um, from an education perspective, but also um, from a project perspective um, in terms of promoting um, and highlighting issues around the environment and, and also um, resolving some of those issues. And I think the partnership arrangement is, is, the, is the right way to go. Um, particularly as an organisation, we have strong working relationships with um, other organisations in the economic development sector, with uh, Tangata Whenua Partners um, and others. And I think to, to recognise the, um, the benefit that they actually provide and delivering on some of our outcomes, I think is a, is a really positive move. So I'm I, um, happy to move that uh, recommendation. Happy to second new recommendation which supports the request from Enviro Hub BOP for partnership agreement. No, no. Just go back and find some words from yesterday. <laughs> yep, she's looking. So to be supports the request for a partnership funding ah. from Environment Bay of Plenty for ongoing operational funding to the new community grant fund. Yep. And Shad's moved that and Bill has seconded it. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Uh, marine strategy, that is Blue Book, page 189, Public Agenda 359. So this, this is a request from the submitter for uh, um, additional funding for um, into the marine strategy for an expansion of the Salt Point Marina. Um, that there is already funding for the marine strategy in the LTP and uh, the recommendation is we include it, um, that piece of work within the piece of work that's currently underway. I think we talked about it during the hearing but just remind me that piece of land is the same piece of land that the university applied and the minister turned down for a research facility. Do we know the university still pursuing that? Uh, so yes, we're working together with the university. Um, we've had a written letter from uh, Doc, who uh, we had to request, so we resubmitted it post the election. We've now been advised that we actually, for reconsideration, we now need to put a new application in, and we're just working through th the elements of that that need to be completed, including the extent to which we may need to reconsult. So, just getting a little bit of legal advice around that, and then that will come back to you for direction. We are uh, constantly engaging with the university on this matter. So, if that went ahead, that would preclude. The marina. Okay. All right. Meantime, we're pers pers wrap it, wrapping it all into that. We'll certainly keep strategy. talking to them through the process. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Shared. Sorry, just in just in terms of the strategy, um, because we did have other. I mean, apart from the marine, I think we had the, the Waka Armour dragon boat um, submission as well, looking at um, facilities and things in that location, um, but also. Understand that this marine strategy is not just Sulphur Point; it's actually across the harbour. Um, so all the other activities, just just strongly encourage, I suppose, um, particularly for those that made submissions, that we um, engage um, broadly with those user groups in particular, those that actually came to, well, actually everybody, but um, bearing in mind those that actually came to present submissions as well. We will do a 
a, a check through the submissions. Um, certainly aware of this one, and the Wakarama and Outrigger Riga Association are included within that, but we'll go through the rest of them as well and make sure. Right, someone like to move. So the recommendation from staff is option one, that we continue with the development of the Marine Strategy Project, um, which the previous council agreed to. Bills moving, shared seconding. All those in favour say aye. Against, carried. And that brings us to the gondolas, and that is in the green book, page 191 and the Public Agenda, page 363. This is me, so um, as the Executive had a conversation around this one, um, we've identified that there's no budget currently within the LTP for innovative opportunities that haven't emerged from either FG or TSP. So uh, we felt that there's some merit in having a modest amount of money available that could consider those options and focus that on uh, fatal flaw risk assessment and high level benefit cost, it's effectively like a, a filter to go, are there potential viable options or not? Uh, so we've suggested uh, 100,000 split over two financial years. Um, just the other point that we would make is that um, the graphics and the animation techniques that were used by the presenter um, have some attraction and there could well be merit in looking at whether we could use something like that or something like that for community-based projects. So that we think there's um, certainly something there that we can explore and we're having some, some emails been flying around on that matter this morning amongst Got executive. So we, but we see that separate from this request for funding. Right, okay. Um, so that would include, because we did have quite a few submissions, uh, so, so you know, we had the, the big gondola presentation, but we did have quite a lot of submissions that talked about rail and there was a, a rail study that was done, um, and long-term, who knows, um, government might be interested in, in funding that, but but, um, but of course with carbon reduction, we the necessity for carbon emissions reduction, we do have to be considering all of that, so there would be the possibility of investigating so that from, from this fund? Yes, so the fund is not specific, so it's not specific to the gondola, it's just, uh, innovative opportunities, so I think what we described it as, we've uh, we've called it a, a transport innovation fund, I think, of some, so it's it's broad, um, and if you were to approve it, then we'd sit down and think about how would we allocate or seek expressions of interest and move forward with that money. Excuse me, Commissioner Wosley, could you put your mic on? About the use of um, um, the technology in terms of that wider community engagement, because and in terms of some of the other things that we've seen, I think it was Tamaki Transformation um, Project, where technology had enabled the telling of a, of a good story. The, the only thing I was going to suggest is whether we added to the... Um, recommendation that we also explore if we, when we come to actually using the fund and looking at prop propositions, um, also talking with some of our transport partners, whether that's the Regional Council of Wahakote or anyone else for that matter who was interested. So it actually can build on that um, seed investment of, a, of 100k. And we're appropriate um, working in conjunction with other transport partners? Yeah, fine. Chair, that just I mean I I like the idea of the um, the transport fund and I think uh, or the innovation fund. Um, because we do have to think outside the square. Um, business as usual is not getting us there. Um, I thought the graphics uh, presentation were excellent. And in terms of our ability to tell the story about what the future of Tauranga might be and what it might look like, the capability to provide pictures like that, I think are fundamental. Uh, so I really liked that component of it. Um, 
And I think if we could use our funds, as Bill has suggested, to leverage investment by our other partners, then we could start to get um, some innovative ideas. Um, I was quite impressed by the gondola thing. I've had the pleasure of enjoying the gondolas in uh, Rio on a trip that I made over there. It's amazing the number of people they shift, in their case, as a tourist attraction. Whether or not it will pass the test of, you know, kind of visual impact in the harbour and, and community acceptance of that is another question. Uh, but that's some of the, the issues that potentially we can explore. So I think this broader uh, funding enables uh, the opportunities for competing ideas to come forward. Uh, and hopefully get some support in testing them uh, for the for the city. So um, I think it's a great initiative. Just happy to move. Shad seconding, and the uh, recommendation is that we include a hundred thousand in the LTP split between two years to enable innovative opportunities for transport movement solutions to be explored, including risk assessment and where appropriate, working with other transport partners. So that's the recommendation. No further discussion. I'll put that. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Um, Cultural Centre at Gate Power Reserve. The, this is Green Book 194 and Public Agenda, page 366. Gareth and I have done this jointly, so just figuring out which one of us is speaking to it. Um, so the um, Nata Mawaho has put a request in to secure the ten, uh, tenure of a site and initial funding. So just in terms of some background, Tauranga City Council has an obligation to Nata Mawaho to find a site for a cultural centre. It was part of the tripartite agreement that TCC uh, would have been NZTA or what was before that transit back in their days and Nata Mawaho in respect of Route K um, to enable that Route K corridor to go through. It was originally envisaged that that would be um, in the valley but um, and that there would be a site that was never, um, there was no discussion about whether that would be a commercial transfer but that we would find a site. Um, the flood mapping that's been done subsequently on that site makes it really clear that that's not a viable site. That's been shared with Nata Mawaho, they totally agree. Uh, so we've agreed that we would find an alternative site to still meet the obligation in the agreement but just not where it was originally envisaged in the valley. Um, this site clearly has cultural significance high cultural significance, it's across from Gate Pa. Uh, so we're suggesting that, um, and also given the fact that Tauranga does not have a museum and there's nowhere for Tauranga to be displayed or the story to be told, um, you know, there's a significant gap there to be addressed. So we would support it and we'd also support working through an options assessment on the um, matters associated with the land, which have got some complexities because they're reserves, and we just need to work through that together with um, the appropriate central government agencies, and, and, but that's something we can do. So I understand from our visit there that that site is actually, was actually part of the PAR originally, and the roads cut through that, and then we put a reserve, and I don't think there's a bowling club there or something, so yeah, yeah. Okay, questions? Christine, so yep, understand in terms of the previous commitment of, of the council. As part of the Root K work, were there other commitments made by the previous council regarding land? And the reason I raised that, we had a um, submission, I think Buddy had presented it in respect of Smith's Farm in the proposition, I think probably for a, a commercial transaction, but he did reference back to previous commitments made. So I was just wondering whether th there was any relationship to this current proposition and previous commitment. Um, so we've looked at that issue of Smith's Farm and as far as we can ascertain there are no obligations, so I think it comes from a desire, an expectation, it was associated with some of the early conversations around the RFR. Um, We've always been very clear as staff when we've communicated back to Buddy and Ata Mawaho that um, the, the, all the work to date on the, on the land policy is where it's to be utilised for strategic purposes, the RFR does not apply. But that doesn't mean that council might not choose to 
work with Tangata Whenua in partnership in some way, but that's not um, an automatic route, if you like, which is what the, the policy provides. And my recollection of the, of the agreement, I can go back and check it, is that there was nothing in there. It was in respect of a, a cultural and wellness centre, and that's really um, what we're talking about here um, for a site to be provided. There was a master plan um, that looked at uh, recreation space for public and these sites, the, the cultural site for Ngāti Mawaho, um, there was nothing ever about housing provision or anything like that. So I think it's more of a desire um, and an ongoing conversation, not a commitment. Yep. Thanks, Christine. Um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge, I suppose, the relationship that Ngāi Tamarawa will have with the Council, and, and in particular um, the work that was done on uh, Route K. Um, and in some ways this this goes towards acknowledging that relationship and, and from their perspective, um, acknowledging the, uh, the commitment to the city um, in particularly in these cultural spaces. So that, that valley is, is, is quite important to them and offsetting that with something else I think is the right thing to do. Um, and that site at Pukehenehene is um, significant not just to Ngaitama Rawaho, but, but actually to all iwi, and actually the broader community, because it's a, um, it's, it's a site of significance locally, regionally, and nationally, in terms of the events that happened there in 1864. And it was one of the only um, battle sites in which Māori had a victory, essentially. Um, so significant in, in that regard. So for this particular um, proposition, I do support the um, the recommendation um, and for council to work in partnership with Ngai Tamarawa and the broader community around um, around a proposition on that particular site. Um, and yeah, I just want to strongly acknowledge, I suppose, that it does acknowledge the, the past, but also how we, how we elevate and bring these stories to life um, so they're visible uh, within the city, because um, as Anne and others have noted in our um, previous meetings, that a lot of that stuff is invisible at the moment. So we do want to elevate that thing, um, those things, to become more prominent within our community. Yes, yeah, one of those outsiders that <coughs> have come to this city and had the the um, pleasure and also. Um, benefit of the cultural uh, awareness um, program that the council runs, I'm just amazed that this history of New Zealand, uh, as well as the history of, of uh, Tauranga, is unknown, not only to people like me, but actually as I've gone around to people that are in the community who live here. Um, and, you know, this is a significant historical site. Um, yet most people would travel past it at 50, 60, 70 k's an hour in the morning and give it no recognition at all, uh, let alone people who come to the city would have no idea that it existed. Um, so I, I think this is kind of almost the least that we can do, <coughs> um, and I'm very happy to support the, the motion, because I think it is part of es establishing the story and the history of Tauranga it links into the other initiatives around, um, and I'm going to say it, museums and his uh, cultural heritage uh, that is completely, almost completely absent in this city. Um, and we can and must do a much better job. Um, I lived here for three years in the 1990s and was completely oblivious uh, to, to the history of the city. Um, and that's just because it's not, it's not present. present. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity, um, good on uh, the iwi for promoting it. I hope it gets national support because uh, it deserves it um, and uh, we should do what we can to encourage and enable it. So I support your, well I support all the comments, but, but particularly your last ones because I mean I, I support us supporting it at this stage and it does reflect that ongoing relationship, but this is actually a nationally significant um, place, and um, I'm sure when it when, when we when we get a project, uh, we will all be supporting 
applications at the national level for, for funding to make it happen. Um, so is someone going to move this? Shad, do you want to move that? And Stephen, you're seconding it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. That brings us to 11.13, user fees and charges, revenue and financing policy KPIs. Now that's the blue book, page 193, and the public agenda 370. The good news is we're getting to the end of the books. So three parts to this report. Um, first is around the schedule of, of fees and charges. Um, no significant changes coming through from submissions. Um, however, there has been the suggestion to change around the um, sustainability um, fees in terms of um, just some, some changes that staff are recommending there shown in the table. Um, the second part of this report is around revenue and financing policy, which is a very minor amendment, but it's really just to reflect um, the use of targeted rates and how we deal with surpluses or, and or deficits in, in that area for clarity. And then the third is around some changes that have come through around some of the measures in the groups of activities, key performance indicators that, that Josh or Jeremy can talk to if there's any questions. So, um, so the, the changes in the, um, in the rubbish, uh, sustainability and waste activity, rubbish, um, reflect our, uh, it's, well, it's, I think it's good, they reflect our, our, um, our focus, which is to encourage the food sca scraps and um, recycling and try and discourage general dumping of rubbish. So the increases in the rubbish and the decreases in the, incentivise the things we want to happen and punish the things we don't want to happen. Is that, that's the philosophy? Any questions? All right, so we've got um, recommendation A, 1, 2, and 3, which is, let's take them one at a time. So let's do schedule of fees and charges, option 1, which amends those sustainability and waste user fees charges and charges for additional bins charges as proposed in the body of the report at point 19. I don't know what that was referring to. All oh, right, okay, at point 19. Yep, I was looking at it at somewhere else. Yep, point 19. So that's page 194. It begins, goes over the page. Um, and approve the draft user fees and charges schedule for 2021-22. So, everyone understand what we're at? Option option one. Someone like to move that? Stephen and Bill seconding. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Over the page on yellow is the revenue and finance policy. You didn't get any submissions on that. <laughs> Very disappointed. <laughs> you, you're proposing um, option one, which has a minor wording changes. My, minor wording change as per point... 25, which you've highlighted for us in yellow. Um, yep. Any questions? Straightforward. Are you happy to move? Bill and Shad seconded. All those in favour say aye. And then the groups of activities, which is starts on, uh, where am I? 374. Um, 
So it's option one, to amend the groups of activities to reflect the changes proposes to the description and targets for key performance indicators for stormwater, wastewater, water supply and environmental planning activities at point 30 and 32 of the report. And again, you've highlighted those in yellow for us. Someone like to move those? Bill, Stephen, second. All those in favour say aye. And then finally, um, B, direct staff to present the final groups of activities, policies and user fees and charges for 2021-22 documents as we've amended them for adoption to Council at its meeting on the 26th of July. So I'll move that. Someone second that. Bill, thank you. All those in favour say aye. We've uh, Black, Park, Black Park recommendations I've sent through to Robin and Raj. I can talk through those quickly. And that is page... Page 16, and it is Green Book 132140 and Public Agenda 262. Thank you. So, uh, recommendation R is fundamentally the same as the previous recommendation, we just simplified it a bit. We've added in S, which is confirming uh, use of the full Tartua Reserve site for Bay of Plenty Badminton subject to development um, of how it's going to work as a multi-use sports facility um, and bringing forward the budget we had for that from uh, 23 to 22 so that we can get on with it. Uh, T was investigate the viability of moving uh, the Mount Place into the Gulf Road Reserve um, and bringing forward the budget that we had planned to support that to the next financial year to um, support that happening sooner. Um, confirming the council contribution to the Tauranga Hockey Association turf renewals as included in the draft LTP. And then the last one was we just threw in uh, a capital grant to the Bay of Hill Trust. We listed all of their projects and you guys can obviously decide which ones you wanted to leave in there, which ones you wanted to take out. We haven't put in any money for the indoor training facility. They needed three and a half. They haven't got any of their own so it makes sense at this time that um, we, we didn't focus on that one. Um, I think the question was in regards to a rating impact. It's, a, it's over the 10 years per annum was 0.1% if we granted the third for all four of those projects. So happy to answer any questions on those. It's all going to come down to the final, the final figures, isn't it? Point, point one's not huge, but... We just I just have no idea where we are in the in the scheme of things. So so if we leave it in, but mark it as as something to come back to. The um cricket. The Bay Oval. Yeah, um recommendation V. That's yeah. the one that you want to kinda of tag as something that we may come back to subject yeah. to where everything lands. I think I think that's reasonable, is it? Happy with that? Um, so we need a we need a recommendation to uh, we need a recommendation to um, uh, R S R S T I need, definitely need my glasses R S T U so f no I think I think what we should do is R S T U T R S T U confirm. And can we leave V on the table until we've had the roundup, yeah. and then come back to that? How does that sound? So someone like to move. So Stephen will move, and Bill will second. R S T U. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. And then um, 
we'll just leave V lying on the table. So that leaves us with one item lying on the table. It does. Then just to perhaps recap the matters that you have referred to a subsequent report that relate to the long-term plan. So you've made the call that the community funding policy will come to a council meeting, so that could go to the 12th of July council meeting. The DC comments, uh, so they were in this agenda, you've parked those to refer to a subsequent council meeting, probably the 12th. And then the comments, which is the orange book, which wasn't formally on the agenda, will go to the next council meeting. And you might still want to have more time to look at that to see if there were any, like we picked up the Remaker one this morning, is there anything else that should have had a funding decision that we've missed um, yeah. in, the, in the pace and the volume? So that's the only things that are sort of still sitting yep. there to be addressed. Yep. Yep. And then your, your financial one. Okay, so the suggestion is that we take a, um, it's morning tea time anyway, so we'll take a 20 minute break now and they'll give us a, an indication of where we are. We can have a discussion then about how we want to proceed from there. Because if we're up over 20%, we might want to go back through all this. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> All right, so we're adjourned now and we will return at uh, 10.30.